Good morning. This is strange because I see so many of you and you don't have masks on and I'm freaked out by it. <laughs> it's kind of a good thing to see many, many more here and uh, we're going to be doing something that we haven't done in a couple years uh, in terms of our worship. And so I just wanted to go over that with you because uh, I was telling the adult class that since we haven't done it for a while, I might make a wrong turn. And if I do, just point me in the right direction and we'll get back to uh, the way we have done things before uh, COVID. So, as you see in your bulletin, we do have an opening hymn. And uh, we are also going to have the confession the way we have the confession near the font because it is there in baptism where we have been made uh, right with Christ uh, he has come to us in the water and through the word. Uh, we confess our sins and we are born anew in the waters of baptism. So we turn and face the baptismal font for confession. And um, of course, you've, you've been here to see all our baptisms that we've had. And then the cross is uh, in the back and the cross leads us in. Much like we have the stations of the cross to follow Jesus in the way he has uh, obeyed the Father and secured salvation for us uh, through the event of the death and resurrection of the cross. So whenever the cross comes in, we turn towards the cross and follow it as it processes down the aisle, leading us into worship, and it'll go by the pulpit. And then on the way out for the recession, we'll do the same thing. We follow the cross on the way out for our dismissal, and then we go out into the world, right? Having gathered here for worship, strengthened on word and sacrament, again, led by the cross to go out into the world to be uh, witnesses and servants of the gospel. So, um, again, I'm excited about this, nervous about this, because <laughs> it just seems weird without the masks for the most part. Um, and uh, again, some changes to our worship practice. We are gathered in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, we confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with the power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O Lord God, you led your people through the wilderness and brought them to the promised land. Guide us now so that following your Son, we may walk safely through the wilderness of this world toward the life that you alone can give. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Again, it is good to see so many of you here, and today um, we are having a a couple things going on after worship. There's a a brief uh, gathering. I don't know if, Paul, we need to say anything more for ushers and um, readers, greeters, liturgical assistants, uh, all those who are part of uh, worship and would like to be. Um, So... We're just going to meet here in the pews uh, right after service, right? Yep, all right, good. So uh, again, that's for all those who are involved in uh, ushers and so forth today. And Scott, anything with the uh, youth group going on? Of course, there's always good, which is fun, cool stuff. So youth group is meeting tonight. Um, from 7 o'clock until 8.30 down in the fellowship hall. I will say that last Sunday we packed uh, bags for the homeless, and there are, uh, there's a big tote filled with bags in the back, so when you leave today, please take a few. If you think that you might come across somebody who's homeless this week, the bag has uh, applesauce, crackers, socks, water bottle, different things in there for somebody who's in need. So please feel free to take as many as you, you think you might want to have to hand out. Um, I also wanted to say, just a reminder, that next Saturday we're meeting at Operation Troop Appreciation Warehouse, um, and anybody in the congregation who wants to come is invited. We will meet there at 10 o'clock. We usually stay until around 11.30, and there are always different things that we can get involved with, things that require lifting and things things that don't, too. So um, you're invited to do that. I will also say that we're preparing for the the Spring Follies, and we are definitely in need of talent. So I know that we have lots of talent in our congregation. Anybody of any age can sign up. If you think you'd like to do something, the sign-up sheet's in the back. Please feel free to, sh- to sign up. And it can be fun stuff, too, right? Yes. Oh, yeah, you can, you can do, um, you can sing, act. Tell uh, jokes. Tell good de- jokes. Love to have a yeah. comedian. If we have any comedians in the audience. Um, but anything that you think you'd like to do, All we'd right. love to have. Good. Any other announcements? Concer- yes, Judy. To make in the lap ropes. Okay. Great. Thank you. Anything else? If not, we'll continue with the word of the Lord. first lesson is from Deuteronomy. When you have come into the land that the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance to possess, and you possess it and settle in it, 
You shall take some of the first of all the fruit of the ground, which you harvest from the land that the Lord your God is giving you. And you shall put it in a basket and go to the place that the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name. You shall go to the priest who is in the office at that time and say to him, Today I declare to the Lord your God that I have come into the land that the Lord swore to our ancestors to give us. When the priest takes the basket from your hand and sets it down before the altar of the Lord your God, you shall make this response before the Lord your God. A wandering Aramean was my ancestor. He went down into Egypt and lived there as an alien, few in number, (coughs) and there he became a great nation, mighty and populous. When the Egyptians treated us harshly and afflicted us, By opposing hard labor on us, we cried to the Lord, the God of our ancestors. The Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. The Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, with a terrifying display of power, and with signs and wonders. And he brought us into this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. So now I bring the first of the fruit of the ground, that you, O Lord, have given me. You shall set it down before the Lord your God and bow down before the Lord your God. Then you, together with the Levites and the aliens who reside among you, shall celebrate with all the bounty that the Lord your God has given to you and to your house. The word of the Lord. Psalm 91 will be read responsively. You who dwell in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty. Because you have made the Lord your refuge and the Most High your habitation. For God will give the angels charge over you to guard you in all your ways. You will tread upon the lion, cub, and viper. You will trample down the lion and the serpent. They will call me and I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them. The second lesson is from Romans. The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart, and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth, and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame, for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to St. Luke, the fourth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where for forty days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days, and when they were over, he was famished. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, 
one does not live by bread alone. Then the devil led him up and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, To you I will give their glory and all this authority, for it has been given over to me, and I give it to anyone I please. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered him, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to protect you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against the stone. Jesus answered him, It is said, do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. You may be seated. <clears throat> A priest shares a story that once when he was on a retreat in a monastery in Ireland, he greeted one of the monks saying, Hey, how are you, Father? And he replied, Fine, but there's still a bit of the devil in me. A few smiled. Not everybody did, but a few of you smiled. Maybe you can relate to that. Maybe others can't. I don't know. I think it sounds sort of funny, but it is a truth, right? about all of us, that there, there is still a bit of the devil in us. And that is because, right, we have not fully overcome sin, at least not in this world. And in fact, that is why we as Lutheran Christians understand our position before God, our standing before God, as being saint and sinner. Simultaneously, saint and sinner, simul estis es peccator, Luther said, at the same time. We are saints, right? We are saints in that we are justified before God, not by what we have done, by what, but by what Jesus has done for us in and through his death and resurrection on the cross. And God then sees us through the lens of Jesus through that redemption and forgiveness that we have in Christ. Yet, yet we still are human, right? And we live in this world. And we have to contend with right and wrong, with good and bad in the decisions that we make and in the actions that we take and the temptations that we face, sometimes we do then indeed stray and fall into sin, as Scripture says. And as we see in the text today, Jesus spent 40 days in the desert, what? Overcoming the devil, for he is the only one that could do that. And Lent, then, is a period of time for us to get rid, if you will, of whatever bit of the devil that remains in us by contending against sin and the things that are wrong and less than wholesome in us as Christians and as we are conforming ourselves more and more to the image of Christ, says Paul. And this, folks, is what it means to be a follower, a follower and a student of Jesus. We are his students, and it means to be in that relationship. And so you see, whenever we do stray and sin, we have essentially forgotten who we are 
and what God has done for us. But remembering who we are and what God has done for us helps us to keep away from those things that are destructive. You know, I used to not like that phrase, fall into sin. It's said a lot in Scripture and in our liturgical uh, prayers often and confession and forgiveness, fall into sin. But you know what? Gads, that is exactly what happens, isn't it? We fall into sin. Almost then it's like a free fall. And it will take you down a wormhole. And some of us not just fall into sin, but jump into sin. Huh. The first reading today contains a creed, if you will, that's part of the Old Testament, that the Jews remembered who they were and what God had done for them by bringing them out of Egypt into Canaan, which was the promised land. We heard that in part of the reading, the first reading today. So we hear, a wandering Armenian was my ancestor, He went down into Egypt and lived there as an alien, few in number. And there he became a great nation, mighty and populous. When the Egyptians treated us harshly and afflicted us by imposing hard labor on us, we cried to the Lord, the God of our ancestors. And the Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil and our oppression. And it was the Lord who brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm with a terrifying display of power with signs and wonders and he brought us into this place Canaan the promised land and gave us this land a land flowing with milk and honey the Israelites sinned though whenever they forgot what God had done for them And in fact, we could say that the great sin of the Old Testament was forgetting this great miracle, the Exodus, being led out of bondage and given the pledge of the promised land to trust and thank God for what that promised land is. And we have that same promise, huh? Being led out of bondage of sin into the freedom of the promised land in Christ. Heaven to come, but in Christ even now. But in failing to thank and trust God and remember what he's done and promised, well, as a result, they fell into sin, right? And some of the sin that they fell into when you read the Torah, the first five books of the Old Testament, oh my, what a mess that was. And that can be a mess for us at times too, huh? Whenever we sin, we forget the central belief of the creed that Jesus died and rose for us, making us new creatures, new creations in Christ, says Paul. And then he says that we are to walk in that newness. Lent then is a time for us to reflect on all of this on the passion and death of Jesus, so that by remembering what he's done for us and who we are in him, we may overcome sin, at least, if not fully, at least avoid it better and contend with it better. And when we celebrate the central belief of our creed, which is the resurrection of Jesus, we're all walking towards in this Lenten season, right? And in fact, every Sunday, every Sunday is a mini Easter that we have died to sin and we have risen to a new life with Christ. And that's what Paul says in Romans 6, right? Think of this. This is exactly what he says. All of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. That's present tense. We're to walk in that newness of life now. So, Paul goes on to say, you also must consider yourselves dead to sin 
and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, he says, do not let sin exercise dominion in your mortal bodies, anger, lust, greed, all those things that are not the kind of things that reflect who Christ is, to make you obey their passions, no longer present your members as sin to instruments of wickedness, right? But present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life. Some heavy stuff right there. You ought to read that, Romans 6 again, and ponder that. So then again, just as Jesus overcame Satan during the 40 days in the desert, we want to do battle and contend and overcome those forces in our lives. Again, at least, if not completely, more and more. And if and when we fail, because we probably will, we simply ask for forgiveness. And we start the journey again. How do we do all this? Well, one of the best ways to do this is simply by gathering for worship as we are doing today. And not just worship, it's fellowship with fellow believers to have conversation and strengthen each other in that journey. To hear the word and feed on the sacrament. It's wonderful to do that as often as we can. And you know something? We do then have those little victories over the forces of evil, over sin, death, and the devil by putting God first. Jesus says in Matthew 6, Seek first the kingdom of God, and all these other things will be added to you. And in the three quotations from Deuteronomy, cited by Jesus when talking with Satan, he reminds us to put God first. Because Jesus knows the scripture, right? And he responds in Deuteronomy 8.3. He says to Satan, when tempted to turn stone in the bread or to jump off the top of the temple or to bow down and worship him, Jesus says, one does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. And in chapter 6.16, he responds by saying, do not put the Lord your God to the test, as you tested him at Massa. And he says um, that we are to, whenever he would, uh, Satan asked him to bow down to him, Jesus says, no, that is you are to have fear, a healthy respect for the Lord your God and serve him only. Do not follow other gods, the gods of the peoples around you. So you see, when we put God first in our lives, making the main thing the main thing in worship without testing him and willfully doing our own thing, but rather living by the word of the Lord and living from that bread that is the promises he gives us. Then in the words of this beautiful Lenten prayer, we do fast from fear and we feast on faith. We fast from despair and we feed on hope because that's the promises we have. We fast from discontent and complaining and feed on gratitude. We fast from anger and worry and feed on patience and trust. We fast from bitterness and feed on love and forgiveness. We fast from words that wound and feed on words that heal and encourage. When we live on the bread of the world, by not putting God first, then that is what sin is. And that separates us from God. So again, in the words of that poem, forgetting God and straying from God brings all that other mess, despair and discontent, anger, worry, even with what's going on in the world around us now. But when in forgiveness of sin and in our restoration of, with God, and when we remember and practice locating and seeing ourselves in Christ, as Paul says, growing in his image and in the ways that we follow him in our lives with prayer and gratitude, words that heal and delight, all that is ours in Christ. So with the words of the monk to the priest when he was on the retreat, Yes, it is true of all of us. There is still a bit of the devil in us. 
And during Lent, we remember what Jesus in the desert has done to overcome Satan and to help us contend with that, to give us that promise and hope of new life with the weapons of the Spirit. Today and every day, we have died to sin and we are risen to new life with Jesus. And we can be his people to serve the world in his name because nothing can stop us or separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Together we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Drawn close to the heart of God, we offer these prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need. We pray for the church. Sharpen its proclamation of the word so that your people learn to reject voices of deception and distraction. Strengthen all who are tempted to believe lies about themselves or others. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We pray for the earth and all its creatures. Protect wilderness places and all plant and animal species that call them home. Sustain farmers and all laborers who work the land and harvest the fruits of its abundance. Merciful God. We pray for the nations of the world, especially Ukraine and Russia. Awaken elected leaders and government officials to the needs of those who are oppressed and grant them compassion to deal mercifully with immigrants and refugees who reside among us. Merciful God, we pray for those in need, rescue those experiencing mental illness or contending with addiction, ease the anxiety of those who live with dementia, command your angels concerning all who are sick, 
especially Neil, Pastor Jean, Kenzie, Tammy, Dave E., Carrie, Elaine K., Svetlana and family, the family of Patty during their time of loss, our police officers, firefighters, EMTs, and others who attend to public safety, our military men and women, especially James Letcher, Kayla and Ryan Kirk, Anna Sheridan, George Cass Jr., Joseph Fariska Jr., John Sarah, and all those who serve our nation, both at home and abroad. Merciful God. We pray for this assembly. Bless those who bake bread and prepare the table for our communion celebration. Accompany those who share the bounty of this meal with those who are homebound or hospitalized. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We give thanks for those who have died. Gather them with all the saints into your heavenly dwelling place. Encourage us with the promise that all who call upon your name are saved. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Accept the prayers we bring, O God, on behalf of a world in need, for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Faithful God, you walk beside us in desert places, and you meet us in our hunger with bread from heaven. Accompany us in this meal, that we may pass over from death to life with Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty, and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and to prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, We praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting, and your faithfulness endures from age to age. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and these your gifts of bread and wine and raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. O Holy Trinity, now and forever. Amen. Remember us in your kingdom, O Lord, and teach us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Return to the Lord with all your heart. Receive bread for the journey, and drink for the desert.
The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. God of steadfast love, at this table you gather your people into one body for the sake of the world. Send us in the power of your spirit that our lives bear witness to the love that has made us new in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, you are what God has made you to be, created anew in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, freed to serve our neighbor. God bless you that you may be a blessing. In the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity, amen. Marked with the cross of Christ, go forth to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.
We're good. <laughs>